Hey guys, today we are taking a look at the Magic the Gathering single prices again. I think I'm going to do this weekly review. Again, we're going to use buy list because for a big collector, uh, it is unlikely you have time. And many times, if you really do have that many copies of one card or one set, a sealed set, or a sealed booster box, uh, you would be tanking your own market. So when you try to find a buy list, uh, find a buy list where the max quantity is high because that is real. That's liquidity. Liquidity is a buy list. The majority of people who sell cards uh, will sell to either Alpha Investments, myself, or a, you know, Card Kingdom is a pretty big buy list. Uh, Card Kingdom is a pretty legitimate buy list in my personal opinion. And yeah, uh, these prices are liquid. So some buy lists today, also I put it out this way, um, some buy lists do not actually give you cash. They still call themselves buy list, but they will only give you store credit, which defeats the purpose of a buy list, right? A buy list, I imagine you would only really want to go in deep if you want to get cash. The last thing that you're looking for in many cases is more cards. Now, People ask me all the time, am I buying? No, I've, I've been offering cards at 40%. Now, they're very bad cards, like standard and modern cards. 40% uh, on TCG player lows, and I, I just can't buy them because I already have way too much of them. And you know, having my 18th gold span dragon is not going to really do it for me. Um, so in my personal opinion, if it's reserve list, if it's something that is you know power 9, I'll take a careful look at it, but if it's like a modern or standard card, I just don't buy those unless there's something like an invention or something that is slightly more unique. Uh, when I mean unique, I again, it's like an invention or a masterpiece, something like that. So I, I know that the borders and so on, I, I get it. Hey man, I get it. Everything's been reprinted to the ground, but at least those look kind of unique. So back to my original assessment as to basically what, what's going on here and uh, what needs to be said. Uh, a lot of cards are no longer valuable. A lot of cards, uh, even reserve lists. We, we always look at the top 100 cards, by the way. So in case you're wondering, uh, this is the top 100 cards by popularity, which means like amount clicks, whatever Card Kingdom defines as popularity. But obviously, Underground C is number one. I use that as a very good barometer. I do believe that we are in for another year. I was going to hesitate. I was saying like, oh, 2024 might be good. I think it's at least six months, possibly another year of just prices continuing to go down. Um, as you can see, uh, not many of the cards that we're looking at you know, they're obviously reserve list high end cards, the majority of them. But the ones that are not, there's not many from new sets, which is bad because this is popularity. You would think that Underground Sea would not would be less popular than a, a new Lord of the Ring card or a new Rivals of Exelon card or whatever it is, right? But that just tells me that the game is in fact uh, dying, right? Because the new cards have less Remember when Death Rite Shaman came up and it was very, very high. I don't know if it took overtook the Underground Sea, but probably overtook a few dual lands when it was like legacy playable. The buy list and that, even though it's low, they really wanted to promote it. They really wanted to, uh, a lot of people to send it to them. So they put it as like top five, top 10. When you are in a down economy, I think the, I think for me, I'm very vested in this it's i gotta hold it i can't imagine selling an underground c i bought for 500 550 for 420 dollars. i mean i just can't do it uh it, it's not in me um to take a massive loss like that uh in my sealed product there's lost significantly other so the one thing i would say is at least these single products are easy to store so you do have the ability to hold on to it because it isn't um, taking that much space versus um, a, a card. Yeah, this Vampire Knight, dude, I have. I don't know why the hell he's worth $80. Like, I have like five or six copies. Like, people sell me this Vampire Dude a lot. Um, anyway, 
But back to uh, my point, uh, I'm trying. Wow, they want 73 copies of Besiegel. Oof. Oh yeah, but back to my initial point before I forget. When you are collecting, uh, one of the biggest things that you have to look at is space. So it's a lot easier to store a bunch of Power Nine and dual lands than you know in in your business office than to store, let's say, the equivalent amount of money in booster boxes. Booster boxes are just so annoying. I do not really love the idea of them. Uh, and, and cards in general should not be thought as an investment, at least a major investment. That should be a 401k. That should be something else. I mean, this is pretty... Uh, what I will say is, you know, I've lost a significant chunk of money. Now, I am not the happiest about this, right? Um, I have a lot of bulk. Uh, I might just rip the bulk. There's really nothing that I can do. Uh, there's really nothing I can do with the bulk. I mean, and, and the bulk, we're talking bulk rares and stuff. Like every every pack has like four or five different rares. It's a little crazy. Uh, I will go ahead and try to say that you need, you need, um, you need to know that, yeah, you need to know what is happening in terms of the marketplace and the overall economy in crypto, especially crypto. Um, when the economy is good, people have more money and they want to, maybe it's tax avoidance, I'm not sure. They do dump more money in magic. And the cards do go up. But when the economy is bad, like right now, it is bad. Uh, people don't buy. And they don't buy at 80%. They don't buy at 70%. They don't buy a buy list. Like right now, there are very few buyers, at least in Houston. And there's very there's a lot of beautiful collections coming up. And it's hard to say no to them. But they still want 90 80%. Right? They still want above buy list prices. And it's just not feasible. Because then the price continues to go down. It's, you know, I, I bought a collection for seventy percent, and within a month it was like less retail. And I calculated it. it's in my little spreadsheet, and you know it was a lot of inventions, a lot of those stuff just got absolutely decimated. Um, I was pretty sure that the invention for the, you know, I, I gotta check the history of it. There should be a website where you could like check the history of this stuff, right? But I'm pretty sure that some of the bigger inventions got absolutely massacred, like on, on the lower end, um, even the higher end. Um, oh yeah, let's let's take a look at the inventions. Yeah, I th I think some of them got absolutely massacred. Yeah, I'm looking at ones that are like twenty dollars now because the frame got reprinted, I believe, or something happened to it. Uh, so Soul Ring, Mana Crypt 1 and 2, Mana Vault, okay, that was the one I was thinking of. Mox Opal got absolutely demolished. Okay, what else is it? Chrome Mox? That one got effed. Yeah, I'm looking at the inventions right now, and they got mother effing, they got, like, wrecked, guys. Like, I don't know what reprint happened, but something happened. Anyway, bye, guys.